Welcome to our channel here at Financial Hub and the third episode of our market breakdown. This week on fundamentals we don't have much, but tomorrow 10th we have Brexit negotiations and there's high probability that we might come to a deal. Apart from that, the UK have data released on their balance trade and we are yet to see how it will affect the market. Let's dive deep into the technical analysis. So yes guys, welcome to the charts. These are the chart breakdowns. As usual, we start off with the euro, the most liquid bear on, in the currency markets. And the euro has been falling for the last two weeks. As you can see, my weekly chart, this is the weekly chart. The last two weeks after we were capped by this minor level, we have been falling. It may seem like they were crossing back up, but the markets are still going low. And currently, it's almost 26 minutes to London open, and they're still going lower. So what do I see ahead of the euro? If I plot this Fibonacci level and try and get an, a, a good feel of what the market is currently doing, I get that the market was capped by the 78.6 level on the Fibonacci. And if we can be able to close above this pivot point, then I believe we can be able to come out and take out this level and perhaps even go lower to this level. But that will depend on if we'll be able to close this week above, below the pivot points. And if I go down to the daily charts, these are my daily charts. So on the daily chart, there was this consolidation for some time, higher lows and higher highs, but you are capped by this level and you came back lower. Now currently we are trading at S2, a consolidation seems like it's, it's being formed and you can maybe trade this by using the inside bar formation whereby you project where the market is trapped and wait for the breakout. So if you're able to break above below S2, then we can expect the markets to come lower, perhaps to S3. If you're not able to close above S2, then you can below S2, then you can expect the market to maybe make a return move before going lower. And if I go down to the four-hour time frame, if I go down to the four-hour time frame, yeah, I have this channel. The euro has been really respecting this channel, trading lower and lower. So you can see lower high, lower high, lower low, lower low, and then we had the third lower high. Then we never we made a lower low but not a really lower low. Then it came back higher. So if I use my Fibonacci and try and project this return move, then the return move falls on the almost 50% level with the retest of the 21 day moving average. So we could maybe see the markets come back lower to S2 before going higher. Perhaps a short squeeze of those who have already executed long trades before going higher to test the 1.55 level. So currently Euro, I'm not doing anything with the Euro. I'm only stocking the market to see where I might get a possible entry. If we get to S2 and it gives me a good signal, then I can be a buyer. If we break past S2 and we go lower, then I'll be looking for short positions. But currently on the Euro, it's approaching crucial zones and I'd advise you not to go into the markets and try and speculate where the markets will go currently because of the uncertainty with the levels that are ahead. But Perhaps you'll get a, if I compare it to other pairs, then you could maybe get a, a breakdown, a break to the downside and lower lows are expected in the market, but we're never sure with the markets, we only wait. So I'll go maybe to the next pair, which is dollar Canadian. This pair has been all over the place, but I took some time off, analyzed the markets and tried to see where we were going. And I'm glad I came up with some solid ideas of what the market was doing. So as you can see, USD card has been heading lower, making lower highs and lower lows. We come, we came to this point, then it came back. We had a second touch of the trend line. We had a three pin pattern, a nice pattern with a very strong bearish engulfing candle. Came back lower, gap down, in fact, to the 1.28 level. What happened? The 1.28 level acted as a good level of demand and buying pressure came back all the way to the 1.298 level, covering this gap. So what do I see ahead of USD card? If the dollar continues to perform as it's performing, then you can expect the market to go higher. But currently, I'm looking for short positions on this pair. This is because even if you expect the markets to go lower, perhaps you'll get a pullback of this move from 1.28 to the 1.3 level before going higher. Or you could even get a lower move and you come and take out this 1.28 level. The markets will perhaps go down lower, take out the 1.28 level and head all the way to this point. However, that will be a long-term trade, so I wouldn't execute that trade with, a, with an intention of getting out perhaps next week or the following week. Those are some of the positions that you will maybe hold for 
perhaps two weeks or three weeks. So in your stickage, as you can see, there's lower highs, lower lows, lower highs, lower lows. If this pattern is not nullified, then you can expect the markets to come lower and perhaps take out this level. And if I go down to the four hour time frames, so you can see the four hour time frame, yeah. We had this downfall, downfall, downfall. The gap down that I was talking about, and then you have this return move, which has come back all the way up. So perhaps you can execute a short trade and the first target of maybe exit for me is the pivot point, which is marked P, which is also the gap point. So if this level holds the gap, then you can maybe expect the market to come back lower, touch this level before going higher to maybe get to this level. That will depend on how the dollar performs. If the dollar strengthens, then you can maybe expect this pair to go higher. If it doesn't, then we'll maybe take out 1.28 level and it could maybe go lower. So that's my analysis on SD card. And I'll maybe now go down to sterling or gold. Yeah, yeah, down to sterling. Down to sterling. One week chart on the sterling. How did last week close? Let's find out. Whoa. A maze. A maze almost crossing back up. Last week was a close which was bullish. More bullish than bearish. So as much as he had this gravestone doji and a continuation of the downside momentum it seems like the market are rejecting some crucial level and trying to go higher on the daily chart then you're able to see precisely what is happening on the daily chart so yeah on the daily chart as you can see we have this first bounce second bounce third bounce and now the market seems like they're heading higher a lot of bullish momentum coming in yesterday we tried going lower pushed back up again so do i see ahead of the sterling for me now sterling i'm currently waiting for tomorrow to maybe get a feel for what investors will be doing after the brexit negotiations are done if it's positive for sterling then we can expect the market to go higher take out the 1.33 level and perhaps even change the direction and be bullish because the last time we had sterling come into this zone was when there was brexit negotiation and i can show you on the weekly chart this was back in 2016 yeah this break this was when you came back to this range the markets have been trading in that range ever since there have been brexit negotiations so for me i'm waiting for the news to be released the decision to be made then we can maybe set the tone for sterling but for sterling i wouldn't hold any long-term trades it maybe hold short-term trades which may be executed on the one hour time frame and the lower time frames as I wait for the decision because you can see on the four hour time frame we still have some setup yeah lower highs and lower lows is a daily indicated you can see that the market was capped by our one yesterday we had this move and it came back up and currently we are trying to go lower so for sterling I'm, I'm not really touching the pair now no setup that I can see nothing really much on sterling maybe we wait for tomorrow and maybe get the decision and we can maybe set the tone for the pair i don't want to be involved with something that i don't understand it's just that i want to be able to know when i'm wrong and when i'm right so for sterling no touching the same with gbpaud gbpaud also broke up broke this level last week it also came into this range with brexit last year uh, in 2016 back in 2016 we have this ascending triangle and if I use my Fibonacci and try and get if the ABCD pattern is complete then my natural gut is yeah the pattern is complete that's the gut instinct I have so maybe maybe Sterling will come back and test this level if this is a real breakout which looks like it is before going higher to touch this 1.875 if you get a retest of this level and a good indication of an entry then I'd be buying bulking up my positions pushing the market higher to this 1.8750 but still i'd avoid this pair and wait for tomorrow since there's pound over here anything to do with the pound i'd rather wait for brexit negotiations to be done and i'll perhaps make the decision depending on how the pair in is impacted if i go down to gold maybe maybe this is my gold chart no Okay, this is the four-hour chart of sterling, yeah. This is my four-hour chart of sterling. I can maybe show you what I'm currently looking, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm maybe expecting a retest of this level. And uh, a retest of this level would also be a pullback of this move from this point. 
So a retest of this level would perhaps give me a good indication of going in and sending the markets higher if that was a real breakout. If the markets sink back below the 1.3850, then that was a false breakout and I'd be looking for short positions taking the market lower. Gold, 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 gold. Yes, guys, finally on gold. I think we'll be getting a breakout soon. Soon, soon we'll get a breakout of this pair. The metal has been sitting in this consolidation now for quite some time, almost three months. After we had a fall from 1360 all the way to 1170, a 2000 pip fall. Then I've been sitting in this consolidation for quite some time now, which is also a triangle. Yesterday we had this move, but we were quickly capped. What do I see of gold? If the euro continues falling and the dollar continues going higher, then I'd use the correlation on that and perhaps expect gold to break this level, break this trend line, take out this level and go lower all the way to 1140 long term. Short term, I'd be looking for 1175. After 1175, I'll be looking for 1160. But that will depend on how the euro performs. But um, I'm more short than I'm long. I'm perhaps 80% short, 20% long. So I'm looking for short plays on gold to go lower. And if I go down to the four hour time frame, yeah, this is the four hour time frame. As you can see, we have this consolidation for quite some time. We had this false breakout. We came, popped our heads back up. Yesterday, we had a breakout. Popped our heads back up, but this seems like a retest. Already, there's some supply coming into the market. London is almost open. So if London opens and most people are sellers, then we can maybe expect gold to go lower. Touch 11.75 for the first time and even go lower. I don't use FIBs and many tools on analyzing commodities. This is because I believe... Most commodities are more directional than, than currencies and won't perhaps do the pullbacks that you expect. So you won't find me using Fibonacci really much on gold. I do use it, but it's not really reliable on gold. So that's basically gold, and that's why I expect gold to be going. And that's a wrap-up of the currencies that I was to go through. So we'll maybe do a wrap-up. So Euro, as long as you're within this range and you have not broken past S2, then I'm holding, if you break past S2 in the 4 hour chart and you get a good entry point on this level, then I'd be buying. But for Euro, that's basically it. Just um, the card, just the card. I'm a seller at this point. I'm looking for short plays. If the markets don't take out the 1.2980 level, I'll be looking for short plays. Buy plays if the market gets to this level, which is highly probable to happen. So I'm looking for that also. Sterling, Sterling, waiting for tomorrow to get the decision, then I'll maybe make my decision pegged on what happens tomorrow. So that's basically Sterling. So Sterling, then GBPAUD. GBPAUD, GBPAUD, uh, we have this ascending triangle break. If you come back below 1.3850, then I'll be looking for short plays. If you get a good buy signal at this level, I'll be looking for long plays. Then I'd maybe finalize with gold. Yeah, gold, as I told you, I'm looking for short plays. I'm perhaps 80% short, 20% long, but anything can happen in the market. It's always nice to be open to anything happening in the market. So that's basically my analysis, my insights on what you expect to happen on the markets. Last week we gave out some chart breakdowns in the last week, but one. And the markets played out as you expected. You can check out those episodes to see how the markets played out and Maybe learn one or two things that you can incorporate into your analysis and use as you analyze the markets. We don't sell signals, we don't give signals because we believe signals don't work. They only entice those people who believe that trading is gambling and trading is not really gambling. It has a lot to do with understanding the markets and understanding yourself. So that's basically my chats and hope you guys learn one or two things. Hey guys, it's Caleb here and I hope you're having a wonderful morning. I'll take it up from Ken. And just do an US dollar breakdown, a very quick breakdown from the top-down analysis. So, as you can see, we have the the um the overall trend has been a downtrend ever since around up here, which was around um 2012. And we came, we had this beautiful downtrend, and we came and found base around here, which was around early 2016. And ever since, we've had a two-year bull trend till um not point. Eight zero zero zero, and since the beginning of this year, we had this beautiful downtrend. We broke our CTL and we 
continued after having our third bounce on the on the downward trend line and we're heading approaching our monthly support and if you go down to the weekly time frame as you can see as you can see down here labeled this was some time back a few um, weeks ago and we had um, I wrote double top downside target monthly support and it's in confluence with our when I said um, double uh, double top downside target basically when you duplicate this um, and you have that and you duplicate it as you can see well you, you have to know something in the markets you can't really be pre um, exact to the points um, you can't be perfect so around this area this region that's why it's a bit big it's in confluence with our double top downside target and monthly support it's a huge confluence and as you can see the whole of last week we had this beautiful drop after breaking our our daily support at 0 0.7200 and we broke down and we're nearly targeting our nearly reaching our 0 0.700 monthly target and if we go down to the daily time frame yeah so as you can see on the daily time frame people um we've had this beautiful downtrend and as we've seen in the week in the weekly time frame we had this beautiful downtrend and over here you can see to precise um how we've had this beautiful channel as you came and tested here tested here beautiful high low i mean lower low and lower high lower high lower high lower high lower high and we've had this beautiful trend ever since the beginning of the year and right now as you can see over here we had this beautiful retest around this level and we have named it or we have labeled the 78.6 is if we draw a fibonacci level from the previous lower high to the lower low as you can see this was in beautiful confluence with the 78.6 and if you look um to the left you can see this region was really spiked and it acted as a really really good support before and after it was broken out acting as a really good resistance and as you can see when we had this beautiful downtrend within the channel we had this first touch second touch and the third touch this was a beautiful beautiful sell position and as you can see if we expound and the reason i've written 161.8 well that guys you'll have to do our course so that you can really understand why we have these two written and you'll really understand why this was a really really good selling region and this spike over here as you can see after this first um sell um signal when you had this spike this was interest rate decisions on the us dollar and it was when the spikes when they increased from seven point um the range of 1.75 to 2 they increased it to 2 to 2.25 and as you can see we had this beautiful downtrend everything was factored into the price all the fundamentals that's why it's not good to trade during the fundamental or data release because this will have spiked many people and people will have come out but this was a beautiful sell we came and found a bit of support over here at 0 0.720 and after that we had this beautiful break and down we came forming new early lower lows and now we are reaching our monthly support which is in confluence with 27 127.2 Fibonacci extension level and before we get any direction or anything I'm really supporting this region to be touched as you can see it's in confluence with our downside um, the channel downside um, target and the monthly support at not 0 0.700 so before we have any other direction I'm waiting to have a settle or a consolidation around here but first the momentum is really strong this can be the second um, week we have another strong break and retest here and maybe spike it before we consolidate a bit and before we find another direction so yeah guys that's basically what i have on the aussie dollar and as i said last week i'll mainly focus on aussie dollar this week as you saw our euro you aussie last week played through we didn't really get the exact points of buying but we still um had a good entry level and went to higher highs but that's it for this week guys i hope you enjoy hope you have a lovely week Please analyze your market and enjoy enjoy the fun of it this is really enjoyable and hopefully in our course we'll be teaching people how to analyze the market and how to have this precise entry level and target levels so have a lovely week and enjoy the week guys